over 50 years of progress separates the racers you've just seen from these vintage machines as they make their annual run round the old short TT course. Starting from St John's, the veterans move off, not without some effort, to Ballacrane to follow the present TT course as far as Kirk Michael and a sharp turn onto the Peel Road. And how they enjoy reliving the thrill of those early days, like the sense of achievement in actually getting the right gear and rounding a bend without falling off. Along the coast road from Kirkmichael to Peel, there's the notorious Devil's Elbow, one of the most exciting hazards of the old TT course. Perhaps the road is wider now and the surface smoother, but otherwise the corner is almost unchanged since the first TT race of 1907. The idea of the tourist trophy races was conceived at a dinner in 1906 of the Autocycle Club, later to become the Autocycle Union. A race on English roads was impossible then because they couldn't be closed legally and there was a 20 miles an hour speed limit. So the Manx government was approached and readily agreed to a race in the Isle of Man. In the first TT held in 1907 there were two classes, one for single cylinder machines and the other for multis and the winning speeds were 36 and 38 miles an hour. The same distinction was made in the 1908 race but in 1909, the separate classes were dropped, fuel restrictions too were done away with, pedalling was no longer allowed, and the winner's speed rose to 49 miles per hour. 1910 saw the last use of the old 16 miles St John's circuit and provides us with the first known film of a TT. They had some pretty odd ideas too. The 90 degree left hand bend at Ballacrane for instance was so difficult on the single geared bikes that this wooden banking was erected to help the intrepid riders swoop nonchalantly round. Most didn't bother to use it. Some tried and look where it got them. By the way, Charlie Collier's winning speed on his matchless in 1910 was 50.6, a quite incredible performance for those days. After 1910 came the move to the present mountain course, and the next film we have is 1922, a real period piece made for the Scott Motorcycle Company. Back to breakfast. And apparently a complete overhaul. By 1922, speeds had risen to almost 60, but spectator interest was decidedly thin by present day standards. The pit routine was much the same as it is today, with Boy Scouts playing an important role. Scots provided what was a sensation then and would be still today, the use of a Kickstarter in a TT to save valuable seconds in getting away. This was the first occasion for 10 years that any make qualified for the manufacturer's team award. Scots won it with third, fourth and ninth places but the individual winner was Alec Bennett on a Sunbeam. Seven years later, machines like Sunbeam, Rudge, Velocet and AJS and names like Bennett, Handley, Dodson and Simpson were on every enthusiast's lips. The course had been improved and riders no longer had to decide which cartwheel rut to follow up the mountain. In 1929, little Charlie Dodson won the senior for the second time. And here's his sunbeam, which lapped at 73. 1930, the senior TT, with Jimmy Simpson having trouble starting his Norton, was a year notable for two reasons. It saw the dominance of the brand new four-valve rudges, which took the top three places in the junior TT, and one and two in the senior on their first appearance, and the last of his four wins in 12 years of island racing, 
by the brilliant Wall Handley, with a record lap at over 76 miles an hour. 1934, appalling conditions, wet and misty, as Stanley Woods pushes off his Swedish Husqvarna V-twin. Stanley had done the double in 1932 and 33, winning the junior and senior TTs each year. But not this year, for in 1934, the double was done by the popular Scotsman, Jimmy Guthrie. And here's Jim being congratulated by Woods. After the Second World War, the races were revived in 1947 and Harold Daniel won his second senior on a Norton at an average of 82.8, slower than pre-war speeds due to pool petrol. There were additional clubman's races too, which gave newcomers more opportunities to race over the famous mountain circuit and learn the hard way. Nineteen fifty one, the Bala Garrigan jump. Les Graham rounds Bala Crane on his Reg Dearden three fifty Norton, and the senior lap record was now up to over ninety five. No wonder for this was the beginning of the fabulous Featherbed Norton era. Introduced in 1950, the Featherbed was destined to become one of the really great machines in TT history, winning nine TTs in five years, before the Italian dominance began in 1955. And four of those nine TTs were won by a young riding genius. Here he is, Jeff Duke. 1961, the 50th year of the mountain circuit. Lap speeds of over a hundred, thanks to great names like Derek Minter, Jim Redman, and another Rhodesian, Gary Hocking. Alistair King here, seen at Ramsey. Tony Godfrey, and Australian Tom Phillips on the works Norton Twin. Number one, the great Bob McIntyre and a young man who created a new TT record by winning three of the races, Stanley, Michael, Bailey, Halewood. And in the Deerstalker, Rem Fowler, winner of the very first TT, 